Hi, I'm Jimmy Evans. This is my wife, Karen. Welcome to Marriage Today podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and like and subscribe. On today's episode, we're talking about empty nesting. Uh, we've been empty nesting for about 300 years. Uh, our children <laughs> are in their 40s. And uh, literally, I mean, I think we had an empty nest. Now, we got married at 19 years old, mm-hmm. uh, had Julie when we were 20, our daughter when we were 20, had Brent when we were 23. And we, we were empty nesters in our early 40s. And so, mm-hmm. and, and our we, kids got married early. And our kids got married early. And so we, uh, uh, we love empty nesting. And, you know, we love our children. And when they left, to go to college. I mean, we missed them and mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was sad when they left. It was also exciting when they left. Now mm-hmm. I want to back up uh, in talking about empty nesting and I want to talk about repair mm-hmm. first. Okay. So, um, there was an episode on Oprah. You recorded this many years ago for me to watch. And mm-hmm. they had a group of women, uh, that were talking about motherhood. Mm-hmm. And these women were, were just being real arrogant. Um, and, the and they were saying, Oh, I live for my children and just all oh, my children are my life and all this kind of stuff. What the women didn't know was their husbands were behind the scenes at the studio watching it and they were all very angry. They were showing the husbands and the wives were just talking about, Oh, this is what I do for my child and this is what I do for my child. Well, the husbands were mad because the the wives had turned their literally their hearts toward the children more than the husbands, the law of priority in marriage says marriage is first Mm -hmm. before the children, the Mm -hmm. children are going to leave home. And, but your marriage, your marriage is forever, but the children are a temporary assignment. You're going to have a relationship with your kids, but when your kids grow up and leave home, they don't want you chasing after them. Mm -hmm. We have a very close relationship with both of our kids and Mm -hmm. our grandkids, but you know, we, we, you talk to Julie probably every every day on the phone, but we see him, we see Julie and, and, and Corey and our granddaughters three or four or five times a year go there. They come here. Our son, Brent, that I work with here at XO, they live 15 minutes away from us. And we see them once a week or something like that, maybe twice a week. And so, but, but the point is they don't want you in their back pocket. Well, when husbands make the same mistake, I'm not just picking on the women. Husbands many times will uh, turn their hearts toward their careers and the wives will turn their hearts toward the kids. And you begin this, this, uh, jealousy, Mm -hmm. this, this resentment, Mm -hmm that says you put this in front of me, whatever it might be, but typically it's the kids or work or something like that. And what I'm saying is when you have an empty nest and the kids leave home, if you put your identity in those children, your identity left when the kids left. Well, I think it goes back to the beginning of their marriages. If if they aren't dealing with conflict, if they're not dealing with that's issues, right. the very beginning of their marriage, then they're, they, that's why their heart starts turning in a different direction. Like if the marriage is not what meeting their needs that they feel like they want, they don't know how to fix it. So they start going towards the children because that gratifies something right. or the husband gets gratified at work, you know? And so I think what you and I had to do is because our marriage almost ended. And so we had almost to start several years. Into our yeah. And so we had to start working on our marriage yeah. and because we built that good foundation by the time the kids left, you know, we were like, hooray. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, because, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And it was like, it, it was, to me, it was refreshing Absolutely. not to have that, you know, that be able to have a relationship with your kids outside mm-hmm. of being the parent is so refreshing. Yeah, it's it just, a, it's a beautiful gift of yeah. friendship. And, and, um, and so. I, and, I, I, and our children today, mm-hmm. both, uh, Brent and Stephanie has celebrated their 24th anniversary. I think Julie and Corey, maybe 26 or seven. They have great marriages. They prioritize their marriages. They have great kids or great parents, but they have, they have demonstrated in front of their kids what we did with them. Exactly. That is the marriages first. That's what I was going to say. They, they yeah. now do exactly. They have, they're good at date nights. I mean, mm-hmm. really good at date nights. And, um, they, yeah, they put themselves first, and and I see their kids. Their kids have such a healthy, right. you know, uh, confidence and esteem. And and yes, they go through kid stuff, but it's like you can just see, you can tell the difference between a healthy family and, right. and not. Well, so the 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 kids watching your parents love each other makes children feel secure. Mm-hmm. When parents don't have a good marriage, the children are insecure. And then the kids leave home, and this is where problem in-laws come from. Mm-hmm. Problem mothers-in-law and fathers-in-law happen because you overly identify with mm-hmm. this called triangling. You begin to use your child to emotionally prop yourself up a lot of times because the marriage isn't working. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying before we talk about the empty nest uh, issues, you have to go back to before the empty nest. 
if you have a good, solid, prioritized marriage before mm-hmm. the empty nest, the empty nest is wonderful. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, the kids leave home, and now you end up, you know, the, and I make the joke of the guy puts on his green zip-up jumpsuit and goes in the garage and builds something for 30 years <laughs> because he doesn't want to be in the house with his wife. Well, you know, speaking of empty nest, though, I, I can always remember when we were going through empty nest, and then my our friends were behind us because we were so young when we had kids. And so, and they were like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to die. They're leaving, and oh, they're, yeah. I'm so sad, and I'm like... How can, and, and, but you know, once the kids go, they're like, oh, and, but then the other part of that is I I remember thinking once the kids are gone, I'm going to be so bored. Oh my gosh. My life never stopped. Oh, yeah. It was That's like, right. I was busier without having kids. <laughs> we love, we loved raising our kids. We uh-huh. love our kids, but it was, it was such a wonderful thing when they both left and then they would come back. It, you, you just enjoy them so much more when they come back. We, we had a ball. I mean, we just, mm-hmm. we loved being together alone mm-hmm. and. And we still enjoy it, and uh, but it's it's just something that that whatever whatever features are in your marriage before the empty nest, they're going to visit you when you have an empty nest. So if you have a really healthy marriage and a prioritized marriage, the kids leave home. It's just it's a no brainer. You just love being alone together. I I had a couple. Uh, I didn't counsel the couple. I count counsel the man. They had never been alone together. Now that's that's a, that except in. The bathroom or in the bedroom. They had never been on a trip together. They had never gone on a date together alone in their entire married life. Their marriage was so bad, they were terrified of being alone together. <laughs> and so I told the man, you need to take your wife on a trip. They went on their trip. They drove about two hours to another city close to where they were, got out of the car, uh, walked in their room, dropped their bags, got in a huge fight grabbed their bags, got back in the car and drove home. And so, I mean, when you, and the, there, he was completely absorbed in work. She was completely absorbed with the kids. Now there was a happy ending to that because they ultimately really worked on their marriage and it became really great. But being alone together really scares some people mm-hmm. and you've masked your problems for so long. Now you're alone and it's just, you know, the, the, the ghosts show up. So my, my, my issue is that get help for your marriage. If you're, if you have an empty nest and there are issues like you've prioritized work or you've prioritized church or you pr- prioritize the kids or, or friends over your marriage, repair that damage and you can have a wonderful rest of your married life mm-hmm. together. We have uh, XO Mediators, XOMarriage.com is our website. We have XO Mediators. Uh, they'll talk to you on the phone. They'll do a Zoom call with you. If you live a- away from here, we're in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. They'll meet with you personally for a half a day, a day, two days to help you get your marriage on a solid foundation. There's hope for your marriage, but sometimes you just need help. Go to your local pastor, go to your local church, go to a Christian counselor. But the main thing is if you, if you're Mm -hmm. in an empty nest situation, approaching one or you're in one and you've got issues you can't deal with, join the club. We all have issues at some point that we can't resolve on our own. Getting help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of wisdom. So if you need help in your marriage, reach out. Even if you're the only one willing to reach out, reach out, get all the tools and help that you can, because having an empty nest is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's something to look forward to. It's not complicated at all if you have a healthy marriage. (laughs) That's good. Okay. So anyway, we hope that this helps. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you again next time. God bless you. (laughs) 